Hello, Pine Hollow Pilots. This is Mr. O with your next set of flip notes. We are moving into our new unit of waves, and this is wave 6P11 key vocabulary. Uh, earlier today in class, we labeled two different types of wave movements with the labels that go with each of them. You will see these words in these notes, along with some few other words that I've probably talked about in class, but if not, we're going to get a general idea of those. So let's get started. Keep in mind while watching these, you have the power to pause the video at any time. You can use this slide to help you collect the notes. Um, you're able to rewind it to hear it as much as you want to get a better understanding. You don't have to worry about raising your hand and asking me to repeat it to you. If something seems weird, crazy, or odd, just write it down. Ask me when you get to see me in class again, anything that's confusing to you, or just shoot me an email or post something on Google Classroom. I'll be happy to respond to you. And you can always refer back to these assignments when completing work about this content. This is the one I think most of you are still not utilizing to its finest, is using these notes when completing other work. There's lots of answers in here. Use them while you complete other work. You have two note option collections. You have to take the notes. You choose how you like to do it, what best suits your style. I left you a Google Doc, which is 6P11, Wave Key Vocab. It's, a, um, it's in the order of these slides, so you can have one document open while you're watching the video on the other document, and you're able to um, collect as you go. Or you can go straight old school. You can use a piece of paper and write the notes as you go. Uh, either way, you don't hand in the notes because these are what you use to complete work with. Um, I will take grades from other things, but not you copying down notes. Now, there's two words before you get started, and I think I call them general terms. The first one, obviously, we have to define is what is a wave, okay? You might think of a hand wave or an ocean wave, which both of those actually are kind of demonstrating waves in a weird way, but by scientific definition, waves transfer energy. Energy is also known as a disturbance, not matter, from one place to another. We'll get more into the, the uh, energy, not matter, but by definition, waves transfer energy. They don't transfer matter. Matter is anything that has shape, volume, and mass um, from one place to another. And then another key term that we'll, we'll talk about a lot as well is the word medium. Okay, And medium is matter that waves travel through. And this is any kind of matter. You've been learning about matter since kindergarten, solids, liquid, gases. Those aren't the only states of matter, but those are all pieces of matter, like the tables matter, waters matter, airs matter. Uh, there's also states of matter called like plasma, like the sun, that's matter. Um, but we'll talk more about that as we go. But waves and mediums um, go together, and we'll talk about those hand in hand as we go into this. First, after this, we're going to talk about there's two types of waves. Now, this gets confusing. Um, most people confuse this because there's two types of waves, and then there's two type of wave movements. Um, so this is the bigger one, types of waves. Um, this is like if you took, um, if you want to take the entire world and separate them into two groups, okay, that's one group here, one group here. That's all the waves in the world. We're going to separate them into two groups. The first group will be known as a mechanical wave. This is one of the two types of waves. Okay, These waves transfer energy through matter. Okay, They transfer energy through matter. And they need a medium. Underline that last one. They need a medium. Um, I often don't do this, but mechanical wave starts with an M. So does medium, okay? So they need matter. Without matter, mechanical waves do not exist. And I would say the most famous of all mechanical waves is sound. Sound doesn't work unless it has matter. The other type of wave is an electromagnetic wave. To make it easy on you, you can write the word EM. It means the same thing. It's the other of the two types of waves. These waves transfer energy through a field or empty space. Okay, just like in outer space is empty space. It does not need a medium, but can use one. Does not need one. And then there are seven types of electromagnetic waves, and they're listed there for you. I would say the most um, famous of all of them is light. But you can probably look at all of them and say, oh, I've heard of that before. 
Okay, so those are the two types of waves. Now let's get into the two types of wave movements. This is how they look. Okay, Transver transverse wave. This is one of the ones we drew today. It looks like the string. Okay, this is one of the two types of wave movements. This is which the energy travels perpendicular to the direction of the wave. As you remember, it kept going up and down, up and down, and you can make right angles like I showed you in class. Both trans, uh, transverse waves, um, both electromagnetic and EM use transverse wave movement. Okay. However, all EM waves travel as transverse wave movement. So some mechanical do transverse, but some mechanical do the other one. But all EM are transverse. Okay. Now, the other type of wave movement is the other one we drew in class today. It's the one I drew like a slinky or a bunch of little circles. So it's the other type of wave movement. It's the way they look. This movement, the energy travels in the same direction as the wave, other than going up and down, up and down. This is the one that's going with the wave, just like the slinky I showed you in class. And this is only found with mechanical waves. And honestly, we teach this because of one big type of wave known as sound. Sound is a longitudinal wave. It is one of the most um, famous of all of them. That's the one I need you to remember when it comes to this type of wave. But sound travels in this fashion. Now, parts of a transverse wave only. So some parts, each of the movements share. Some parts are unique. Let's talk about the parts that are unique first. You'll find a crest in a transverse wave movement, and it's the highest point or peak of the wave. Okay. You'll also find a trough in a transverse wave movement only, and that's the lowest part or valley of the wave, the trough. Okay, we labeled that in our models today. Now there's two parts of a longitudinal, also known as a compressional wave, that only go with that. That would be first the compression, only belongs in these type of waves, and that's where you can see that they're compressed or closer together and this is also known as amplitude in this type of wave movement. And then the other one that's unique is rarefaction. This is part of that longitudinal wave movement only. And it's the part of the wave that is stretched, extended, or expanded out. And this is showing you the release of energy or release of that amplitude. Okay, But those two things are only found in longitudinal. But then we have some parts that are found in both types of waves. When we labeled the waves today, you notice that there was two things that we labeled in both, and there's going to be a word at the end that we will use often when describing waves. The first thing that is labeled in both is amplitude. It is found in both of the movements. The transverse is the distance from the resting center line to the trough or the crest, doesn't matter which one you go to. The higher the trough or the crest, the more amplitude or more energy it has. Longitudinal waves... It's a measurement of one full compression. So the bigger the compression, the more amplitude that wave has or more strength it has. Wavelength is found in both. In transverse, it's the distance from one crest to the next crest or one trough to the next trough because it would be the same measurement. But in a longitudinal wave, you have to take one full compression and one full refraction together that shows one wavelength. Okay, and we showed that in our models today. And the word we did not show in our models today, but we will use very often, is the word frequency. And this is the number of wavelengths that pass a given point over a given period of time. And this is typically one second because waves travel very fast. A lot of waves happen in one second. Frequency and wavelength are directly related. And if you do not know what that means, as one goes up, the other one goes down. High frequency equals short wavelength. So if it's happening often, it means the wavelength's not that far apart. Low frequency means it's not happening very often. is a long wavelength because they're very far apart. And we'll talk more about that as we go. And this is used for both longitudinal and transverse. Any questions you have for me, please have them written down. But this combined with what we did in class with drawing of the models should have made sense. If not, we will continue to work on this. Let me know if you have any questions. Take care.